and welcome to On the Front Line, the grocer's new video series where we talk to the people working to get food and essential items into the shops during the coronavirus crisis. I'm Kevin White, the grocer's fresh food editor, and today I'll be talking to James Simpson, the MD of Adrian Scripps, one of the UK's premier fruit growers and pickers. Established in 1960, Adrian Scripps grows a range of apples, pears, grapes and black currants on five farms across Kent. James has worked for the company for almost 30 years and joined at, as a graduate assistant in 1991. In our chat, he's going to explain how the business has dealt with the pandemic's myriad challenges, from social distancing to soaring demand from lockdown bricks, and what the future holds for the company and the wider top fruit sector. Yeah, the impact, it really hit us um, in those first few weeks of panic buying when we saw anything between sort of 20 and in some product lines, 50% increase in daily demand. Uh, that obviously challenged the packing facility quite considerably, um, but we worked really closely with our retail customer to make sure the shelves remain full. But what, we, what we've seen for the last 10 weeks is effectively 10 weeks of Christmas. Um, we've had some of our busiest, busiest periods for, for many years. Did the business see any kind of drop off um, you know, in, in demand once that food service and, and, and those hospitality channels shut up shop essentially at the end of March? Uh, yeah, we did, I think. Um, definitely saw a drop off in our um, food service in the demand from our food service customers, but we saw an uplift in demand from the wholesale market, um, where prices strengthened, demand strengthened, and also from online um, farm shops and box schemes. So we do an amount with um, several of those sort of customers and so we saw an increase in wholesale increase in online um, customers but a decrease in the food sector the food sector is picking up a little bit at the moment but it's still in all honesty it's dead how did the crisis uh, manifest you know itself in terms of you know your day-to-day -day working you know on the farm in the pack house what kind of changes did you have to implement Oh, we've had to make significant changes, um, particularly around um, working habits and working process on the pack house floor, uh, as well as protocols just in and around offices. So we were able immediately to allow a number of um, staff to work from home, particularly those with children that were no longer at school. But just very simple things like having doors taken off of hinges or propped open so people didn't have to handle door handles um, to move in and out of um, buildings, um, some segregation in the pack house, uh, higher levels of um, PPE, uh, offers of PPE, um, of face masks, face shields to staff, uh, hand washing facilities, additional hand washing facilities on site. So that's in around the packing facility, but on the farms we've had to go further with um, different vehicles and more vehicles for moving of staff, uh, different um, and accommodation available for self-isolation etc so I think in total you know we're into a six-figure sum that it's cost the business so far. In terms of attracting um, that seasonal labour has that become more difficult for you during this whole crisis? Obviously there have been difficulties prior to coronavirus um, you know following you know yeah. the Brexit vote and everything is this something that that worries you as a business? We've got very good numbers on our lists for picking in fact we've got such good numbers on our list for picking that actually we've stopped taking uh, names for reserve lists. We have had um, somewhere in the business probably of the seasonal labour that were short, we easily replaced that with furloughed workers or students. And I think this is a slow burn trying to reintroduce um, British workers into the business. There are so many misconceptions from all um, sides of the argument about the type of work, the physicality of the work, the attitude of the workers, whether, which, whichever nationality they might be. What we have found is that the, the Brits that we've employed have been genuinely honest, good, hard workers. The challenge has been um, a uh, becoming accustomed to the type of work. It's almost alien to the British workforce now to get mud on the boots and dirt on the hands. Um, but what we've found is that actually they've been very receptive to that type of work. It's just, bloody hell, this is harder than we anticipated. Mm. 